keyword clustering is a nightmare if you have to do it manually because first you have to spend time finding thousands of keywords and that takes time and on top of that then you have to go through the entire list keyword by keyword to find the main category and the subcategory you can see what i mean but luckily there are tools that can help speed up this process significantly and one of the tools is keyword insight and when i started using keyword insight i of course wanted to know how easy is it to find low competition keywords that i can rank for and how easy is it to build a topical map using both the cluster function and keyword insight and the keyword research tool starting with the keyword research then there are three different ways you can run it either you can enter your seed keyword you can enter your domain or your url if you enter a seed keyword then it finds all related keywords to that seed keyword if you enter your domain then it finds related keywords to your domain and the same for the url and i really like to have these options because sometimes you just want a different angle on finding the right keywords and sometimes you just get stuck in using the same C keywords for your website. So having these three different angles to perform a keyword research is definitely on the plus side. And when you run your keyword research, then it finds up to 5,000 keywords per time that you run it. You can run it twice and three times if you want up to 15,000 keywords. And when you get the keywords, we get the normal stuff that we get. We get the search volume, we get CBC and the competition. But I have to say that the competition metric is completely off and I wouldn't trust that. I checked some of the low competition keywords and the domains ranking for those keywords had an average DR on 80, which is impossible for me to rank for. So definitely check out those keywords you want to rank for yourself in the SERP to make sure that you can actually rank for them. I think the competition score in Keyword Insight is based on the CBC. At least that's what it looks like when I compare different keywords to each other. But when we use it as an SEO tool, it just doesn't make so much sense for us to focus 100% on the CPC as our competitor metric. Because we want to rank organically, we don't want to pay ads to rank. But with all these keywords, I would love to have more filtering options. I would love to be able to filter out all questions so I could see them. All comparison keywords, for example. Right now, I can only sort on the elements we can see and filter on the elements we can see, such as search volume, CBC, and competition score. We can also sort by the keyword, but that's a bit irrelevant. But the thing is that they also have this AI filter, and I tried to write in this AI filter, show me all the questions, but it didn't show me anything. So it's definitely still in beta, and it's clear to see. But if we could communicate with the entire report like that, that would make a lot of sense. But right now, the filtering options are very limited and I would just like to have more filtering options. I would also like to be able to click on the keyword to see how the SERP looks like right now for the keyword because that saves me time. So I don't have to open a tab and go to Google and search for it. And then of course, in that overview in the SERP, see the DI in general just for the keyword. And they could also use that average DI on the keyword in the SERP for their competition score. That would make a lot of sense. And overall, I would say around 80% of the keywords that it found were relevant for my seed keyword. So that is definitely a success. Then you just have to remove the rest of the 20% and then create a cluster for your 80% of the keywords. And the thing is here, you need to be aware of that when you create a cluster of keywords, then you can't edit it. You can add new keywords, remove keywords. So be sure that when you create your cluster, then you check all the keywords you want to be part of this cluster report. You can also do it another way that you can go into the clustering module and then create the report that way by choosing the keyword report you just made. But the thing is that then you have to basically run a clustering report on all the keywords, even the 20% that's not relevant. And with Keyword Insight, then you have an amount of credits and every keyword that is a part of a clustering report costs one credit. So depending on your plan, then you might quickly run out of credits. And that's why I like to sort through my keywords and only cluster the relevant keywords. Of course, I don't check each keyword super detailed. I just do it from a rough overview and then I remove the keywords that doesn't make sense for me. But once you have clustered all your keywords in different categories or different clusters, then you have the overview. And here you can see it either as a table or as cards and I like to see it as cards because then you get a little preview 
of what keywords are part of each cluster. And the funny thing is here, the first time I ran it, I ran it with only seven keywords and here it couldn't cluster anything. But the second time I ran it, it could cluster all the keywords almost. And here I ran it with 50 keywords. And of course it makes sense because the more keywords that are part of your cluster, the easier it is for the algorithm to find similarities between the keywords and categorize them together. And that's why also that when you run your cluster, remember to include all the keywords. Because overall, when I have my cluster reports, I would like to be able to edit it. And I can't do that here. For example, I have this card where all the keywords that couldn't be categorized or clustered are part of this card. And sometimes it's easier for me to basically just pull it into the right cluster. And I would like to be able to do that, but I can't do that right now with Keyword Insight. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to edit it and move around the keywords. But once you've clustered your keywords and you want to start writing content, then you can actually generate a content brief for one keyword at a time. And again, depending on your plan, then you have a certain amount of content briefs that you can run. But the thing is that it's a great feature, but it's not fully developed yet because you can't write your content using Keyword Insight. You can only generate this content brief. And with the content brief, it basically analyzes the entire serve for your specific keyword. And then it pulls in all the headings that are relevant for your keyword. So either you can get inspired or you can pull them over and build your own outline. And that's what you can do with a content brief. You can't see DR still. You can only build your outline and you can generate your meta tags using AI. So again, it's a great module and it makes sense to have, but it would make even more sense if they had a content editor. And that's when this module really makes sense to use overall because then you have the entire common thread throughout the system. You run a keyword research report, you make your keyword clusters, and then you start writing throughout your content brief based on all the research you've just done. So when they had that entire process, then I think it's a great tool to use to create your content and of course your topical map as well. And they also have two minor tools which are quite funny to use and they're completely free to use if you want to use them. First, then they have a serve similarity module. And here you can basically enter a bunch of keywords and then the serve will be analyzed based on your keywords. And then Keyword Insight will tell you whether you need to write one article, two articles, three articles based on your keywords. Because the more similar the serve is for your keyword, the more it makes sense to just cover all the keywords in one article. And you basically get an overview of all the serves next to each other so you can also compare them and take the decision. And I think often, at least based on my own experience, I often know when an article needs to contain two keywords or needs to be targeted to one keyword. But I also like to take data-driven decisions. So this is just an extra security layer that I'm taking the right decision that I can run this similarity module and make sure that what I'm doing is correct. And the last module is the Serb Explorer. And this module makes sense, but it's really missing some important elements. First off, it's super easy to use by entering your keyword, choosing the country, the device, and then you run the report. And it's great for local SEO as well because you can use cities. But what it does is that it basically shows you a screenshot of how the SERP looks like right now. And that's about it. You can't see DR, you can't see details about domains, you can't see the overall content, how they have written it. You can only see the screenshot. And then you can see the only information that you have entered. And I think this is a missed opportunity because here they can really give us a lot of information so we can see whether we should pursue this keyword or not because you don't know until you actually start analyzing the keyword. But right now it's exactly the same as doing a Google search manually myself right now. The only thing is I save a little bit of time and I can do it from different locations in the world. But overall, after using Keyword Insights for some time, I will say that the navigation is definitely something they need to work on. Because every time you run a content brief, a keyword research, or cluster your keywords, then it's all collected in the projects module. And you have to go in there and find a specific category for what it is that you have created, whether it's a cluster or keyword research, and then you have to open it up again. In some of the modules, you can see them as well, but I would just like to have it collected in the respective modules that if I've run a keyword research, then I can find it in the keyword research module. It's a minor thing. But to get back to my introduction where I wanted to find out, can it find low competition keywords? And how about the topical maps? And I will say for low competition keywords, I wouldn't use this tool because the 
competition score, as you just saw, it doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't show the competition metric based on DR and other ranking factors. It does it based on the CPC. But I will say that you can easily build a topical map using Keyword Insight. And again, the more keywords you cluster at the same time, the more precise of a report you will get. But if you want to try out Keyword Insight, then you can actually start completely free using the last two modules I mentioned. But you can also get full access running a trial for four days, only costing $1. And here you get full access so you can try everything. And from there, then it, you can upgrade up to 58 US dollars and then it goes up from there. So compared to the alternatives, it is a bit pricey. I like to use low fruits, which costs only $30 per month. But the thing is that you can't really compare tools like this because maybe Keyword Insight works much better for you. And if it does, then $58 is nothing compared to what you get out of it. And all the time that you save that you have, don't have to manually go in find keywords, categorize them, and so on. So it is really a personal thing whether you like this tool or you like to use another tool. But I think there's no doubt that Keyword Insight is made for content creators who want to get their content out there to write content for target keywords that are easy to rank for and of course also build this topical map. And at the moment they're working on a content editor for the content brief module. So when they have that, then I really feel we have full circle using Keyword Insight. And it'll be so interesting to see. But I want to give Keyword Insight three and a half stars. It's a great start for them as a product, but the Keyword Research module needs a little work. And then the UX overall was a bit difficult for me to use. And then of course we need the content editor to really be able to fully use the product. But if you want to see my review of my favorite Keyword Research tool that I have teased a little bit, then you can do that right up here. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.